Anyway, and I'm sort of still stuck on one of the equations in, uh, in this paper, as we'll see. And I'll kind of explain that I sort of chose this. I was the closest I could find to what I was looking for. So, uh, but it's ultimately that one. So I want to talk today about two related issues in ordinary quantum QCD, beta dependence and the U1 problem. Okay, and from, and this is really taking us a long, back a long way. This is taking us back even be, before the beginnings of, of, of Nanti's career. Uh, and in those days, instantons were thought to provide an understanding of both uh, theta dependence and the U1 problem. But while they sort of look qualitatively interesting, they were plagued by infrared questions. One didn't, couldn't do reliable computations. And the questions are really questions then of strong coupling. Now, from instantons, though, there were some sort of qualitative explanations, both uh, expectations, rather. First, for theta dependence, that, for example, in a pure gauge theory, the vacuum energy as a function of theta would look like uh, lambda to the fourth times uh, Cn times some coefficients times cosine n theta, where because of these IR divergences, you couldn't calculate these Cn's, but you might expect them to be order one numbers. Uh, and with, uh, with matter, uh, one expected a potential for the eta prime, which would look something like this. The eta prime basically comes along with theta. Uh, by shifting eta prime, you can get rid of theta, and you expect some potential like that. But this, this latter was also rather heuristic since the eta prime is not particularly light, uh, and so why one it's not clear why one should focus on this. Now, Witten long ago suggested an alternative. He suggested, first of all, said that instantons don't, might not provide a reliable guide, uh, and suggested instead one should think about this from the point of view of the large N approximation. So large N, as you know, is uh, the limit of an SUN gauge theory where N goes to infinity with G squared N fixed. And as following work of Adult, as Ed stressed, uh, there are many qualitative features of QCD, such as the existence of re stable resonances uh, and Zweig's rule and so on, which are, which are accounted for by, by, such a, by such a picture, in particular by the assumption that N equals three is a not, not too bad an approximation to N equals infinity. Uh, and at large N, uh, Witten also noted that instanton effects should behave as e to the minus 8 pi squared over g squared. g squared goes like 1 over n, so this would go, these would go like e to the minus cn. Okay? And in that case, well, that doesn't sound good because then the u1 problem reappears and so on. Okay? And instead, what Ed suggested was that the theta and eta prime potentials should arise from resumming perturbation theory. Okay? And the end dependence of, of, of these should be as you see in, in, in Feynman diagrams. Okay, so some of the implications of this viewpoint. So if I think about, for example, correlation functions of, of uh, at zero momentum of f of dual, these behave as, uh, as derivatives of the vacuum energy with respect to theta. And so they should behave like n to the uh, 2 minus n. Okay? Uh, and uh, so I've drawn a diagram down here where I have uh, just shown two insertions of f of dual, and you have there, you have two factors of g squared from propagators and a factor of n squared from uh, the uh, number of gauge bosons. Okay, so this one's order one, n to the zero, and if you stick in more f of dual insertions, you find additional factors of one over n. Okay, and this is not compatible with a simple cosine theta or more generally some cosine n theta behavior for E, at least a nice smooth behavior. Things have to, you know, things like cusps and so on are allowed or would be allowed as we'll talk about in a moment. Okay, now if nf is much less than n, okay, then you can think of quarks as a perturbation, okay, uh, and in particular the anomaly is a perturbation and what Witten stressed is that in this case eta prime can truly be thought of as a pseudo, the eta prime is a pseudo Goldstone boson with mass of order one over n or mass squared I should say of order one over n. So the puzzle then is what about the sort of two pi periodicity you expect in theta? And again, what Ed suggested is that that could be accounted for if, for example, the energy, now this is the pure gauge case, if the energy is a function of theta, looked like lambda QCD to the fourth, uh, uh, and this should actually read a sum, theta plus two pi k squared, okay? So, uh, so we have some set of integers uh, here k, and if I shift theta by 2 pi, I can compensate that by, uh, by a shift in k, k goes to k minus 1. Okay. 
So introducing quarks in that picture, again, I replace theta by theta prime plus eta prime now over f pi in large n. And now I can write an expression in terms of a Goldstone boson mass matrix where now eta prime is, again, is also a pseudo Goldstone boson, so we can include it, include it as well. Uh, and then we can write a potential really for theta and eta prime, which looks like the usual piece proportional to the mass squared and the trace of the Goldstone boson matrix. Uh, plus this expression we wrote before, theta plus 2 pi k plus eta prime over f pi squared. Okay? And let me focus for a moment on the limit that the quark masses are small. Uh, in that case, for example, the mass of the eta prime is, goes like 1 over n, okay, from this formula, because, uh, because f pi squared, I should say, goes like 1 over n. Uh, that should, f pi squared, it should read, goes like uh, n, not uh, square root of n, sorry. Uh, and the interactions of the eta prime are then suppressed as 1 over n to the n minus 2, eta prime over f pi uh, to the n. Okay. So I should note that, again, that the, that the surprising part in some sense for the eta prime is this extra suppression in the interactions, the fact that all the interactions go to zero rapidly with n. Okay. So, uh, so supersymmetric gauge theories uh, provide a sort of testing ground for a lot of these ideas. Okay? Uh, uh, in, in real QCD, these problems are hard. In supersymmetric gauge theories with small soft breakings, we can address all of them. Okay? And today what we'll see is that in pure gauge theory with small m lambda, uh, one has branches and n dependence uh, sort of the type that's anticipated. And, and I should say that the n dependence is exactly as uh, Witten anticipated for uh, for, the for the potential for, for example, for the eta prime, okay? The branches arise from the spontaneous breaking of approximate discrete symmetries, okay? So we can understand what they are, okay? Uh, small numbers of matter fields can be treated uh, systematically as a perturbation, uh, and the eta prime, as I said, is, uh, behaves exactly as anticipated. But a few other things we'll note, so all that's fine. But while the n-dependence is as anticipated, the interpretation in terms of Feynman diagrams is, is obscure. It's not quite clear what we're, how we're, uh, you know, what we're getting, how we're getting that. And another, and interesting is that when instanton computations are possible, uh, one finds the same n-counting as anticipated from perturbation theory. So one doesn't see an exponential suppression. One sees power law behavior with n as, as expected from, from, from looking at Feynman diagrams. Uh, and this critical role of spontaneously broken approximate discrete symmetries raises the question, since these symmetries are badly broken as the various soft masses are increased. So, for example, in pure gauge theory, this will, in the pure supersymmetric gauge theory, this will mean as m lambda goes to infinity or uh, becomes much larger than lambda QCD. The question then arises, do these branches survive? So, in fact, we're going to see that even in the region of weak coupling, there are phase transitions as functions of, for example, the uh, gauge genome masses over the quark masses between n and nf ground states. Okay? And whether, so whether, for example, the n branches survive or disappear as the soft breakings increase as we, and as we approach real QCD is a question for lattice experiments. Okay. So let me talk first a little bit about supersymmetric gauge theories uh, without matter, and this, of course, bring, takes us back to the, those things, some of those things that Nati and I did uh, in the early 80s and then followed by the spectacular work he did in the 1990s. Okay? Uh, and we've understood much about strongly interacting supersymmetric gauge theories, uh, especially as a result of Nati's work. Uh, exploiting the holomorphy of quantities like the superpotential as functions of the gauge couplings. Uh, in the supersymmetric limit, for example, the gauge theory without matter we know possesses a Zn symmetry, a discrete symmetry, uh, which is spontaneously broken by a gauge geno condensate, okay? And we can even write a formula for it, okay? The gauge geno condensate is 32 pi squared times this thing called the holomorphic lambda, lambda holomorphic cubed uh, e to the 2 pi i k over n, Okay, or these k's can take n values corresponding to the breaking of the symmetry. And the first question we ask, can ask, is this consistent with expectations from, from large n? And for this, we need to understand two things. We need to understand what is the n dependence we expect from Feynman diagrams for the gauge geno condensate, okay? And how is this holomorphic lambda related to lambda QCD? Okay, 
So let me talk first about the independence of the, of the gate genome condensate. Okay. So uh, let me just remind you first for just ordinary QCD and large N what, what, what one expects for the independence. And for this, go back to an argument of Coleman and Witten for the for quark condensation at large N. Okay. So if I define an order parameter M, which is expectation value of psi bar psi, the effective value, ex, the effective potential for M takes the form V of M is, N, has an overall N, and then it involves some function of M dagger M over N squared lambda QCD to the sixth. And to, 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 this is just a little exercise in uh, Legendre transforms, okay, starting out with, uh, if you like, the potential for the energy as a function of the quark masses and inverting that to, to determine a potential for psi bar psi. Okay. Now, the establishing the existence of quark condensate, uh, as Coleman and Witten did, uh, involves uh, anomaly matching. That's not really our concern here. Once we have it, from the form of this potential, we know that M uh, is proportional to N. Okay. Uh, this is com sort of comfortable with the fact that for large N, F pi squared is also proportional to N. So, for example, from the relation M pi squared F pi squared is MQM, we have that the pi on mass squared goes like N to the zero times the quark mass times the QCD scale. So it, it has a nice limit uh, as N tends to infinity in terms of the quark mass. Okay. And so what about lambda lambda? Well, lambda lambda has a very similar story. You write down the same sorts of diagrams. There's an overall N squared as opposed to the N, but the scaling is the same uh, uh, with lambda lambda over n squared, you have to, to do that. We have to remember. Uh, we have to. I have, you have to remember that I'm normalizing the fields so that one over g squared sits in front of the of the Lagrangian, uh, and, and uh, g squared goes like one over n. Okay. So uh, so what we have here is that lambda lambda then should go real, in terms of the physical parameter, the the thing we call lambda QCD should go like n. So now we had this formula before for, uh, for lambda lambda, which was involved some 32 pi squared, but it involved also the holomorph this holomorphic lambda. And for that, we need to uh, understand what the connection is between lambda holomorphic and lambda QCD, and that I learned from Schiffman. Okay? So there's an N, okay? and you can understand that. Uh, it's not that hard to understand this connection. Okay? Uh, and so n lambda lambda indeed goes like n lambda QCD cubed, okay, as we anticipated from perturbation theory, though the, the connection is somewhat obscure, and what I mean by that is that Seiberg's argument, the general argument for lambda lambda involves, for example, uh, considering, uh, uh, considering instanton calculations in a theory with quarks and giving the quarks large mass and so on. So, so there, there are many steps to getting to that result. All right. It, while we're on this theory and counting factors of n and so on, it's sort of interesting to look at uh, the large n limit uh, uh, or adding matter in the large n limit and treat it, seeing whether we can treat that, that as a perturbation. And I'm just going to give one example. Okay. Uh, so in, if we add uh, quarks to this theory okay, with a small mass, we can compute the expectation value of q bar q okay, as a... Uh, 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 the expectation value of q bar q, okay, this is slightly heuristic, but it works, okay? So if I consider q bar q and I just start doing perturbation theory, I would write that the, uh, the, the leading contribution to q bar q, I would expand the action and use Wick's theorem, okay? But what I do here is I replace the Gluino pair that appears here, okay, by, this by the Gagino condensate. Okay, so I, so I just do ordinary contractions of fields except for the Gigino condensate. Okay, and then I'm left with a simple Feynman diagram to evaluate. And the result is Q bar Q is 1 over 32 pi squared uh, m quark divided by absolute m quark squared times the expectation value of lambda lambda. Okay, and we know both those quantities, okay, from, again, work of people here. Okay, and we have find a complete agreement. Okay, so the our calculation is arguably heuristic. Okay, we, uh, this, this kind of perturbative approach to the large n limit is something we can implement here. Okay, so, uh, so let me turn now to adding soft breakings. Okay, so I now want to actually go more directly 
to the sorts of questions of theta dependence and the U1, and the U1 problem in QCD. Okay? And so what I'm think, the way I'm thinking, I'm trying to think about these theories, I'm trying to think about softly broken supersymmetric QCD as a large class of theories of which real QCD is a corner. Okay, and so there are various parts of this which we can understand well, and there are parts we would really like to understand which are harder, okay, but we can at least look at what happens in, 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 in various regions. Okay, and in particular, if we take the pure gauge theory and we take a small holomorphic galuna mass, okay, uh, and I'm writing there m lambda is absolute value of m lambda times e to the i theta over n to stress the connection of the phase of the gauge genome mass to the theta parameter. Then we can write uh, the potential for, for V. I think I lost the line here. So V is, so the action looks like M lambda times lambda lambda, or M lambda over two times lambda lambda, and I'm just replacing lambda lambda by its expectation value, which remember involved this e to the i k over n, okay? Uh, and now we have also this phase, uh, e to the i theta over n. So we have a potential V of theta k, which looks like M lambda over two, this lambda holomorphic cubed, cosine theta plus two k pi k over n, okay? Now, so first of all, so this looks kind of like what we're after, okay? As far as counting of n's, we've already seen that lambda holomorphic cubed goes like n times lambda QCD cubed, uh, and this m lambda is not quite the physical lambda because of this one over g squared I talked about in front of the action, okay? So if I have one over g squared in front of the Gagino kinetic terms, then the physical mass has an extra g squared in it. Making that, accounting for that, I have actually an n squared, okay? And so, the, so v of theta and k looks like n squared, m physical lambda cubed, theta plus two pi k over n squared. So here what I've done is I've taken the cosine and just expanded it for fixed theta and, and k for very large n, okay? And this is exactly the sort of expression that we anticipated earlier uh, for the vacuum energy. Now we can talk also about, now we have a physical picture, at least in this limit, for what these branches are, and we can ask about things like their stability. And so here we can, uh, for example, for small m lambda, uh, we can ask about the tunneling between states of different k, okay? And we can do that uh, for small m lambda and small k, we can do that the, in the thin wall approximation, okay? So the domain wall tension for, these, for this system is well known. We have BPS domain walls uh, with tension, which is equal to the change in the superpotential between vacua, which goes as n lambda QCD cubed. And the energy splitting goes like 32 pi squared m lambda lambda QCD uh, cubed, okay? And so when I take the ratio t to the fourth over delta E cubed to get the bounce action, I find n to the fourth lambda QCD cubed over m lambda. And so this suggests that if I take m lambda to be even of order lambda QCD at large n, okay, these states will be extremely stable, okay? So high, extremely metastable, I should say, okay? Uh, now let's also consider adding quarks, okay? So if I add now quarks, so if n f, with nf much less than n, uh, I have a sort of model for the eta prime, okay? So let's consider supersymmetric QCD with NF less than N flavors, okay? With M quark equals zero, that has an SUNF left cross SUNF right cross U1B cross U1R symmetry, okay? And if I had a small mass, uh, a small quark mass, uh, and uh, take N much larger than NF, the su whole superpotential looks like this. It looks, it has an N, okay? There's this lambda holomorphic cubed, uh, determinant Q bar Q over lambda squared to the one over N plus Q bar uh, MQ Q. Okay, so now I'm gonna add soft breakings, and the first one I'm going to add is a soft breaking uh, scalar mass, squark mass, okay? And I'm gonna take them all, the, the masses to be equal, so I preserve this symmetry that I spoke of, okay? Uh, so I've taken this just this mass to be, matrix to be just a unit proportional to the unit matrix. The symmetry is as it is as I said is just what I started with. Okay. Now if I ignore for a moment the Gagino mass uh, and the and the quark mass, the potential looks like this. It's the partial W partial Q squared plus partial W partial Q bar squared plus this soft uh, these soft breaking terms. Okay. And this yields a minimum uh, at Q bar Q 
equals V squared times some unitary matrix, which is now my unitary matrix of Goldstone bosons, okay, and I haven't, uh, well, I haven't been too careful about how I normalize the eta prime, okay, and V here is given by this la holomorphic lambda parameter times, uh, again, the large n limit, lambda holomorphic squared over m twiddle squared to the quarter. So if I take, for example, m twiddle squared of this of order lambda squared, and again note this n, then we have, for example, the f eta prime or f pi goes like square root of n, again, as expected by standard large n arguments. Okay. Now small m lambda breaks the Zn symmetry, okay? And we can take, and if I take again m lambda is uh, absolute m, m lambda e to the i theta over n, we now have a potential for v which looks like uh, this potential we wrote down earlier, V of theta and eta prime, goes like M lambda, lambda holomorphic cubed, and cosine theta plus two pi k plus eta prime over V divided by N, okay? Uh, and arg determinant U, the thing that, again, appears in this early literature, is uh, eta prime over V. And again, expanding for a very large N, we write down this potential for the eta prime, okay, as anticipated. Okay, with exactly the scaling dependent, anticipated for n, okay, if m lam, uh, for m lambda physical of order lambda QCD. Okay. So, okay, so that picture supports this long-standing large n picture for, uh, for the eta prime and for theta. Okay, and now I want to talk a little bit about instantons in these theories, because instantons, again, taking us back, as is I, my joke about 1983, taking us back there, this is something that, thanks to, in very large measure, to Nati, we understood at that time. Okay, so we sort of see, what, so, so this, the story I've described up to now suggests two possible behaviors as the soft breakings become large. Uh, so we've seen that the soft breaking, that the n vacuum, these n branches in this case, are associated with this, this breaking of the discrete symmetry. The discrete symmetry is both explicitly broken and spontaneously broken. As we crank up the explicit breaking, we might wonder what happens, whether these n vacua persist. So there's the possibility they persist or the possibility they don't. Uh, and looking at this, were it not for the argument that instantons are suppressed, okay, it would seem quite plausible that the, that the branches disappear. So supersymmetric theories, in some cases, permit reliable instanton computations, and we can ask whether they're suppressed for large n. Okay, so, uh, so I want to think for a moment about cutoff instantons, where cutoff here refers to an instanton, uh, an infrared cutoff. Uh, and a pick of sharp cutoff instantons, as I said earlier, would suggest some form for V of theta, like, you know, as a Fourier series in cosine theta. Uh, and for example, in QCD without flavors, you could think about the one instanton contribution to theta, uh, to, to, to V of theta, and that would look something like this. It would involve uh, a e to the minus eight pi squared over G squared of M squared. This is the e to the minus, source of the e to the minus N that Ed's uh, talked about. A cosine theta, uh, there's an N straggling there that doesn't belong there. Uh, M to the, uh, an M uh, row to the B naught, basically. Uh, and the rest follows basically on dimensional grounds, okay? And as I say, since g squared of m is of order one over n, uh, this is formally exponentially suppressed, okay? This the expression, however, is infrared divergent and complicates the argument as, as Witten noted at the time. Okay? So if I was cut off this expression in the infrared at rho of order lambda QCD, okay? And I guess I really should say rho equals lambda QCD, then we would say that V of theta is some constant times lambda QCD to the fourth times uh, cosine theta. And lambda QCD in, lar in this large end counting, because it involves e to the minus eight pi squared over B naught G squared, is of order one, not order e to the minus N, okay? Now, as Ed stressed at the time, this argument is hand-waving at best, okay? If, so Ed was well aware of this. If, the, if we cut off the, uh, the computation not at lambda QCD, but lambda QCD times a constant, then the result can be exponentially exp uh, enhanced or, or suppressed by C to the N, okay? Uh, and so it's hard to make sense of this story, okay? So, so, add sort of dis so one might dismiss uh, this, this kind of possibility. 
Okay, but we can ask if that happens in, in QCD, and this is the origin of my remark that I'm still staring at this equation in, our old paper, in my old paper with Ian and, and Nati. Okay? In the case of uh, supersymmetric QCD, okay, uh, the computation, for example, of the superpotential is similar and involves these sorts of powers of rho to the b naught uh, and involves uh, uh, the lambda parameter here. Uh, but, uh, but it's cut off in the infrared by the expectation value v of the quark fields. Okay? Uh, and what you get from this is something that behaves as lambda to the 2n plus 1 over v to the 2n minus 2. Okay? A careful analysis yields the expression I've written here, uh, lambda holomorphic to the 2n plus 1 over determinant q bar q. Okay? And lambda holomorphic is indeed e to the minus 8 pi squared over g squared of, uh, uh, of m times n. So when we raise it to the n pow nth power, n plus first power, we get an effect that goes like e to the minus n. Okay, so, uh, okay, so that looks compatible with, with our expectations, but there's the question of what V is, okay? So V also depends on lambda, okay? And here again, taking the quarks to have equal mass, V goes like lambda holomorphic, essentially times some fractional power which goes to, goes to zero of lambda holomorphic over MQ. So at the stationary point, the expectation value of W is some constant lambda holomorphic squared mq and times again something that's raised to some vanishing power, okay? So this is, uh, this is uh, of order one, not of order e to the minus n, okay? And there are no factors, there are no strange factors of two to the n or pi to the n or something like that, okay, which might have obstructed a suitable large n limit and that's basically because the the, because the infrared cutoff itself is determined self-consistently by this computation. Okay, so the value of W, the, the form of W determines V, which acts as the cutoff. Okay. If we consider, if we add a gageno mass to the, if we per perturb the system with a gageno mass, we get a an E of theta, which behaves like lambda holomorphic cubed, uh, and lambda, so again, what that's, as before, that's like N squared, okay, times cosine two pi k plus theta over n, okay, complete, in complete agreement with expectations based on n counting of perturbative Feynman diagrams, and in particular correlators of n FF dual operators at zero momentum still behave as n to the two minus n, precisely as expected, okay? But at the same time, the result rise, arises from instantons, and one way to understand that is in terms of our earlier cutoff argument and in terms of the uh, notions of holomorphy with which, uh, Nati has educated us through the years. Uh, the infrared cutoff is lambda holomorphic, okay, uh, uh, yielding cosine theta over n. Okay. So the question arises, does the branch structure survive? So on the one hand, we see evidence for this branch structure. On the other hand, we see that instantons are not suppressed, okay? Uh, and moreover, we'll see that the, uh, we see again that the branch st structure is associated with an approximate discrete symmetry, which is very badly broken if we consider the limit of real QCD. So again, we could imagine the po logical possibilities that these branches survive or that they s disappear in the large N limit. Okay. So a case where we can explore this uh, without having to wave our hands is the theory with general NF and N with small soft breakings, the kind of theory we talked about at the beginning. Okay, so already in the limit of, of soft breakings for general NF and N, NF and N, there is an intricate phase structure, and we'd anticipate this, okay, and again, this sort of in the spirit of all the things that Nati has drill, drummed into my head over the, over the last many years, uh, by just thinking about the symmetry patterns, okay? So for M lambda non equals zero and MQ equals zero, this theory has a ZNF symmetry, okay? For M lambda equals zero and MQ not equals zero, the symmetry is ZN. Okay? And so as one varies the parameter x, which is m lambda over k, mq, both small, uh, the number of vacuo, local minimum in the potential changes from n at small x to nf at large x. Okay? And I didn't make plots here, but it's easy to check. Okay? And just before the states disappear, okay, they become, in terms of this e to the minus n to the fourth, they actually become highly unstable. They basically, at some point, each of the states develops a, uh, 
you know, uh, develops a massless particle and, uh, and, uh, and, and decay is rapid. Okay. So if I take, for example, mq squared and m lambda squared much less than m twiddle squared, m twiddle squared is this soft scalar mass that I introduced earlier, uh, then uh, q bar q is some v naught squared e to the i eta prime, okay, and the potential looks for large n the potential for the eta prime looks like uh, mq lambda holomorphic cubed cosine eta prime over f pi plus n m lambda lambda holomorphic cubed cosine eta prime over f pi and f over n. And I should stress that this is very much like this chiral Lagrangian I spoke of earlier where there's the usual quark mass term and there's also a piece that involves the, the, the large n effect. So the large n term is a uh, play, role is played by that second term, okay? This potential has n vacuum in the limit of small x. It's kind of easy. You can almost stare at it and see it. And f, nf in the limit of large x. The transition occurs for x of order 1. Okay, or actually, there are a sequence of transitions as the states disappear. Uh, and as I said, as the vacuum are about to disappear, they, became, uh, they become less and less metastable or more and more unstable. So apart from illustrating the possibility of a re rich phase structure, we can use this result in considering actual QCD. Okay. Uh, if we take, if we can, in, 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 we can consider approaching QCD in various ways, but in particular, if we take m twiddle squared, m q and m lambda goes to infinity, in, but with an ordering that m twi twiddle squared much greater than m q, much greater than lambda, or m twiddle squared much greater than m lambda, much less than m q, we have sort of two sorts of behaviors as we head to real QCD. In one case, we have n branches. Uh, in the other case, we have nf, okay? Now, so if we're to find n, bra n branches in real QCD, we have to, there ha as we go, as we follow these trajectories, we would require a rather complicated sort of behavior. This is plausible, but I think these observations also make it plausible that, that, that some of these branches, that, the, uh, that the n branches simply disappear. Okay, so I am, uh, I think, yeah, I think I'm doing okay for time. Uh, so there are, I want to conclude by saying there are two possible behaviors that I, that I think are interesting to consider. For real QCD, either that there might be n branches or order one branches. Uh, this has implications, for example, for the behaviors of the eta prime and also uh, for applications of QCD-like theories in situations like uh, monodromy inflation. And to settle this, um, I think what, what's required are lattice computations. Now, I should be upfront and say that there are some. Okay, so in, for example, this summer, a uh, paper appeared studying correlations of f of dual uh, in theories with n of order six or seven, okay, uh, and studying, for example, correlation functions of the form f of dual to the fourth at zero momentum, uh, which, uh, which, are, which show some evidence for the branch picture. But I think what's particularly interesting, would be particularly interesting to do would be to look for these unstable states, okay? So we've argued that if there are such states, uh, that they should be long-lived at large n. Uh, and current lattices are not, in fact, that large, okay? So what one might expect is as you look in your ensemble of configurations, if you're pro properly reproducing this physics, uh, you should see the different value members elements of the ensemble have different values of this quantity k. So if I measure integral d4 x f of dual, that should go like lambda q to the c to qcd to the fourth times k times vt with different values of k for different values for different members of the ensemble. Okay. So whether that's, I, I, this, whether or not such a thing is feasible, much less, uh, it's certainly not been done, is something which, uh, which we're looking at now. Uh, whether, uh, whether it's in principle feasible. Okay, so that's really all I have to say about this. It shows my debt to Nati, uh, my debt to the Institute, the Institute to Ed, to uh, other friends from Princeton, some of whom have just arrived. Uh, and um, so I just want to say happy birthday. Uh, I want to thank you for many years of friendship and scientific inspiration. Uh, and wishing you and me many more. <laughs>
mean one or do you mean some number larger than one? Oh, uh, order one? In, in which, for, for which question? You said there were two options, order n and order one. Oh, oh, oh. well, for example, uh, uh, well, I think, uh, well, that was, that was, I think, being a little sloppy. My guess would be one. So, so in periods of pure no QCD. Cusp, so there would not be a cusp of the Right, right, so that's a cross. So that's what's wrong with the standard argument? Uh, there's not. Argument or the examples from two dimensions and so forth. The, 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 I, I'm not claiming there's nothing, the, there's anything wrong. So the, for example, the example, the CP, as I've thought a lot about the CPN model, which does have this cusp. So that the possibility, the, the possibility exists is, uh, as a logical possibility is correct. What, what the, the, what's potentially, uh, the, 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 the potential breakdown is the question of whether or not the, the correlators actually show, FF dual correlators actually show this one over n to the n minus two behavior. Um, and the cutoff instanton picture would suggest something different. I think this was part of the original point. And so I think that's the, that's the issue. And in the actual cases where we can actually study it, you still see, as we saw, you actually see the, still this cosine theta over n behavior. So all I'm saying is I think it's a logical possibility that things look more like this kind of crude cutoff instanton. In, in the pure gauge theory. In the second question, you alluded uh, And I should say, I, I, I mean, I, I'm sorry. And I should say, and this also reflects a question that Tom and I were talking about the other day, that, the possi the, that there's the logical possibility that the FF dual, cor that many FF dual correlators are larger than suggested by the perturbative argument. Okay, they can't be smaller, but, but, but larger. Second question, you alluded to the relation to monodromy inflation. C can you elaborate on that? Uh, yeah, if, if uh, so, uh, I don't know if any of the practitioners are here, but if you go back to this potential I wrote for the, yeah, if, I, if you look at this potential, if theta is an axion, okay, uh, and n is large, Okay, then this system, this is a simple system which you may or not believe is a plausible model of the real world, but implements monodromy inflation. Okay, so, uh, so in, and in particular, we have branches whose lifetime we understand and is long. So if theta is moving slowly, it can become, it can, theta can wind n times. Okay, and so you can have a long, uh, a, a large, distance in inflation. Now what's required is n of order 60 or something to, you know, so you have to kind of imagine the world is stuff plus SU60 to, uh, you know, and in this case with, you know, and in this case with the soft breakings. Now people talking about monodromy inflation have used this picture, the, the branch picture for QCD itself as a possible, as a possible model. And this, uh, and accepting that picture, this is then just a way of understanding things like the stability of the different branches, which I also find hard to understand in the string, in the string constructions, for example, that people talk about. Though, though the claim is that they're also stable, highly metastable. Yes. Uh, I just have one small comment. Sure. Right. The part where I tried to say what the mechanism was to generate effects was weaker because it's either some yeah. perturbation theory or computing instantons in a stronger couple theory that are, are somewhat over time. Right. So any claim that either of them is better than the other is suspect. Yes. So I, I hope you understand that. Well, so kind of addressing, we've talked about. Lati, Ed, and I have talked about these issues before, and I hope you understand I'm trying to kind of make plausible various possible behaviors, not to make any strong claims about. Yeah, I do like the fact that there is here, a, 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 in this limit, there is a picture of, of what these states look like and what the phenomena are that are generating this potential. And I think it does raise in a kind of, in a reasonably sharp way, what, wh you know, what's required as you go, as you go to real QCD. Any other questions? Mm -hmm. 
I have a small comment about sure. monodromy inflation. Great, so n, n makes uh, the effective period of theta larger, Yes. but also it could bring down f pi, so make it smaller. Yes, because yes, 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 definitely. <laughs> Thank you. Anyway, this was not a talk about monodromy inflation. I, for all kinds of reasons, uh, um, I'm, not, I'm not a person. If, if I were giving another, another talk I might have given here is a talk about inflation on, on string moduli spaces, inspired by all the things that, nothing I thought about through the years uh, on these questions, which I think is a more plausible, and I think sort of the, the real moduli are more, not that I know how to compute things, really how to derive a potential, that's also something that we've worried about a lot through the years, but as a possible setting uh, for uh, home for the, for uh, slow roll inflation, I think that's a, 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 and especially large field slow roll inflation, that this is a particularly uh, as plausible a setting as as we have. Okay. If there are no more questions, let's thank Mike again. <laughs>